emphysema is part of a group of diseases that make up COPD, or chronic obstructive pulmonary disorder. Now, COPD is a name given to diseases in which air exchange is impaired by the, no, by the narrowing of the lower airways or by the destruction of the um, alveoli. Now, let's focus on emphysema. Emphysema is an incurable airway disease of the lungs. Emphysema is characterized by the destruction of the alveoli, its walls, and elasticity. It is part of a group, as I mentioned, of diseases that make up COPD. To understand this disease, we must first review the respiratory system to get a better understanding about what this disease is all about. The respiratory system consists of anatomical structures involved in ventilation and gas exchange. It allows us to breathe oxygen in and exhale carbon dioxide out. Let's look at this uh, in a bit more detail. So the respiratory tract can be divided into two parts, the upper and the lower respiratory tract. The upper, upper respiratory tract includes the mouth, nasal cavity, pharynx, and larynx. The lower respiratory tract includes the trachea, which branch out uh, to the bronchi and then to the bronchioles, and finally to the alveoli, where gas exchange takes place. So what would be happening is that oxygen will travel through this pathway to the alveoli and carbon dioxide will be exhaled from the nose. Let's zoom into these normal lungs, normal lungs, and look at a normal alveoli. So the alveoli are found in bundles like so. Here we have the bronchioles, the terminal bronchioles, which will join to the alveoli. And alveoli is plural. So alveoli is composed of many alveolus. There is rich blood supply around the alveoli because this is where gas exchange takes place between oxygen and carbon dioxide. So we have deoxygenated blood entering the alveoli and reoxygenated blood leaving the alveoli. Another fundamental point to take in about the alveoli is that the terminal bronchiole and each alveolus is wrapped around by elastic fibers. But why would they be wrapped around by elastic fibers? Well, this is to allow the alveolus to expand when receiving oxygen and then to deflate when exhaling uh, carbon dioxide out. Same for the bronchiole. So remember, oxygen and carbon dioxide are exchanged essentially within the alveoli. So if we were to, to look at it even closer, um, gas exchange occurs between each alveolus and the capillary, the blood. So oxygen is exchanged for carbon dioxide in the alveolus. Also, if we cut a cross-section of the terminal bronchial of this lung, of this normal lung, we can see that it does contain a wall, it has a wall, it has some mucus, perhaps, and an open airway, which is very important because this will allow gas to flow comfortably through. Okay, so now that we know a bit about the structure and function of the normal lungs, let's look at a lung with emphysema. So I'm going to draw the exact same diagram except uh, of an alveoli and the terminal bronchiole except from a patient with emphysema for example. So one of the notable key characteristics of emphysema is the loss of elasticity both in the terminal bronchiole and notably on the alveoli. Also there is Emphysema is an abnormal, it's a permanent enlargement of the air spaces with destruction of the alveoli and alveo alveoli wall. And usually this is without obvious fibrosis. So the main reason for the destruction of alveoli and elastic fibers is because the immune cells begin secreting chemicals known as protease. And this is all part of the inflammatory response, so it's actually an inflammation. 
an increase in protease results in the destruction of elastic fibers and collagen. And this will cause enlargement of the air spaces and destruction of the alveoli and the walls. So essentially, protease will cause destruction of the alveoli and elastic fibers. But again, what's important to understand is that the alveoli itself does not enlarge. It is the space that enlarge. So this enlargement in airspace volume will cause some serious symptoms. Of course, we still have the blood supply and oxygen exchange that will affect that will be affected due to the damage of the alveoli. And anyway, cutting a cross section of the bronchiole with emphysema, we see a thicker wall to compensate, an increase in mucus due to inflammation, all of which contribute to the narrowing of the airways. Now, the narrowing of the airways will cause difficulty in breathing. In particular, it will cause shortness of breath and discomfort. Emphysema is mostly associated with heavy smoking. So that is essentially the number one cause. There is also, um, actually about 80% of emphysema death is attributed to smoking. So it is no wonder um, that the number one preventative measure is to stop smoking. Emphysema is also known to be associated with indoor or outdoor pollution. Now, there are actually four main types of emphysema. Before going into each one, let's briefly look at normal, uh, a normal alveoli and the terminal bronchiole. So here is the bronchiole and the alveoli, which is made up of many alveolus, remember. The first type of emphysema is known as um, centri, uh, centria sinar emphysema. And this is where we have focal enlargement and destruction of the respiratory bronchioles, whereas the distal alveoli are un unaffected. The second type of emphysema is parasinar emphysema. This involves the enlargement and destruction of all portions of the asinus, which is, compri uh, which is basically um, enlargement and destruction of the bronchioles and the alveoli, essentially. Then we have the third type of emphysema, which is the paraseptal emphysema. This is where the bronchioles are unaffected, but we have enlargement of air spaces and destruction of the alveoli. Then there is the, um, the parasicatural emphysema, I hope I pronounced that right, or irregular emphysema. This is often seen in individuals with inflammatory conditions and is mostly involved in scarring of the tissues, so the, it is associated with fibrosis. So emphysema is not a disease that you can just have the next day. Emphysema is a chronic disease um, occurring over a course of, uh, a course of many years. Dyspenia is usually the first symptom and can occur even at rest. Dyspenia is discomfort of breathing, usually slow breathing. Other symptoms of emphysema include cough and wheezing. And weight loss is often seen. And if emphysema becomes severe and is left untreated, respiratory failure and heart failure can result. So let's look at the diagnosis. Often the individuals can have a sign of a barrel chest, which is basically a protruding chest, um, as well as you can see muscle wasting. Chest x-rays is often used to diagnose emphysemas, but if that does not reveal anything substantial, a CT scan uh, may be required and performed. Emphysema is usually diagnosed using a pulmonary function test. And to do this test, you usually use a machine known as a spirometry, this machine here. And this machine, the spirometry, will essentially measure the um, expiratory air, air flow limitations. So what it basically will do is that it will measure how fast and how much the air you breathe out. 
and if it's low, it's an indication of emphysema. I hope you enjoyed this video. Next video, we'll look at the pathophysiology of emphysema. Thank you.